So anyway, where I was going with that was I found on eBay, and you, all you have to do is look for gaskets. These are like 14,000, 13,000 thick for the 562 series. Now, like I said, he makes them for a variety of the different saws, but that's down from 30,000s. That's where a stock gasket would be for a 555 or a 562 is 30,000s plus. So I'm picking up 15,000s at a minimum, um, dropping the cylinder by just simply using this, this gasket right here. That's one of the cheapest hop-up uh, concepts possible. A slight increase in compression and um, I mean these cost a few dollars. They don't cost very much at all. So I, I'm, I mean when I saw these I was quite excited because if you watched some of my earlier videos I would cut these things out of gasket paper. I was cutting them out of ten thousandths thick gasket paper but uh, 13, 14 thousandths, I mean, to save the time and hassle, the difference is small enough it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to use these guys. They're going to make uh, a performance increase in a couple of the junk pile builds I have coming down the pike here. So right alongside um, these thinner gaskets, 14 thousandths versus 30 thousandths, I found that these guys work pretty good as well. And this is Little Red Barn. I know there's some people who object to the Little Red Barn pistons because of how they're manufactured and a whole bunch of other reasons that I don't care about. I have found these pistons to be uh, reasonable and uh, when I look at things like the uniform thickness in the bottom, whether or not one is thicker than the other in terms of the core for the forging or the casting in this case, Eh, you know, the casting's okay. It's fairly uniform from one side to the other. I usually end up adding a little bit of in intake timing, but that's what I do. And plus, I would clean up all these uh, flashings around the inside. Um, the one I had before, I didn't need to. This one here, I probably would just because of the nature of the casting. But for $40, the combination of adding a little bit of material into the combustion chamber, that's what a pop-up is, and... A thinner gasket, that's a real cheap hop-up for a 555 or a 562, and I know it works because I've done it. One of the things I like about these pop-ups, the way they put the chamfer on the edge of that uh, pop-up area, that's not going to do a whole lot to the scavenging of that cylinder. And when I've torn them down, the pattern is pretty good. There's people who object to pop-ups because of how that raised area in the piston may affect the flow coming in from the transfers. I found that to be a pretty much a non-issue on these and I've looked. I understand the theory behind it but the practical side of this says that these things run good and I haven't had one fail. Now that may change you know like I say all the time like, like when I was dealing with a farmer tech saws uh, that's this point in time I've got about six maybe seven of them out and I haven't had any come back and uh, that's been now for a couple of years including the one I have in the back of my truck which is oh my god three years old now maybe it's whatever they first came out with these is I got one early on and put it in that on my 572 um, gotta be a little careful that the squish band when you put your piece of solder in there make sure that that pop-up uh, has enough distance right here at the edge of the pop-up to the edge of the switch band. I've heard some fellas say that theirs were a little bit tight with the 572. Mine was not, and I checked. I did not have that problem with my 572 pop-up. I really didn't. And I haven't had that problem with these. You can see that that's, you know, plenty far away from the squish band on these things. Uh, that's a 550 but I've got one for the 550 so my next 550 build I did not put that piston in the little junk pile build I just did because I cut a pop up on a lathe you know but we get a little further into it I'm going to try that one out I've got a couple of these for 
555s and 562s. But uh, 40 bucks delivered. I don't know, maybe five bucks delivered. So fifty dollars in parts and elbow grease, and you get about a fifteen or twenty pound increase in compression. Now there's a lot of guys who don't understand how compression affects the way a saw runs. And I find it kind of interesting listening to the twists and turns. Um, the biggest thing you get out of compression is efficiency. And what I mean by that is it's, it's basically thermodynamics where if you increase the compression um, basically when you light off that gas air mix it's going to burn with a certain level of efficiency and there's a point of diminishing returns of course but when you increase the compression a little bit um, you're increasing the efficiency of that burn which means more of that energy gets turned into the expanding gases which in turn turn the, the crankshaft by pushing the piston down so a little more efficiency. You go too high in the compression, of course, it beats up things in the bottom end, but also adds a level of resistance, which hurts the, hurts the higher RPMs in your power band. So it's it's always a, it's always a give and take with any of these type things. There is no free lunch on any modification. There's always a change, and I don't care what anyone says. Um, it's always a give and take. You add more RPMs, more compression. It's more stress in the bottom end, you increase the chances of failure, and you, and you most likely reduce the service life of the saw. It's what happens. I don't care what anyone says, I don't care how hard they argue, that's the fact of the matter. There is no magic pill. Now, so this is the, the thin gasket pop-up piston for 562, 555. I think that's a good move. Do that along with the muffler mods that I do. And in an afternoon you can have a uh, changed chainsaw. It's going to run a lot different than it was when you started by doing that and it'll be for the better. Now there's another reason why moving the cylinder down and closing up the squish, otherwise the distance between the piston at top dead center and that little band in the combustion chamber called the squish band, when you tighten that distance a little bit, you're also moving the material into the combustion chamber where it can be burned. So not only do you get a more efficient burn because of the increase in uh, compression, but more of the material that's up in the combustion chamber is in a place where it can burn. It's one of those things where somewhere between 30 and 40 thousandths, uh, there's going to be material that is at the outer edge of the piston crown that doesn't get burned. It'll, it'll light off, but it doesn't get burned. And then you tighten the switch band, it gets squeezed into the dome of the combustion chamber, in fact, gets burned. So you're getting two things. You're getting the increase in compression, increasing um, efficiency of the burn, but you're also getting more of the fuel in the combustion chamber to where it can be burned. And that's why just simply doing something like a base gasket delete on some of those saws uh, yields a tangible change in the way the saw runs. Now, as far as supporting is concerned, you know, guys will argue all day long. Um, when you move that cylinder down, um, in addition to getting the increasing compression, which is going to be more efficient, burn, more of the material in the combustion chamber so it can burn, but then by moving the top edge of the exhaust port further down, that means the piston is going to be under pressure for a longer period of time. And... Um, Usually, that helps the lower end of the power, power band. So the compression does, um, moving more material into the combustion chamber does, and the longer exhaust duration, all three of those things are positives for meteor mid-range power in a chainsaw for being simplistic. And also by dropping the, uh, the intake port, you're adding a few degrees of duration on the intake timing and yeah you can argue the pluses or minuses of that but that usually helps a little bit on the top side not the bottom side so <laughs> uh, just kind of a interesting blend of things and the downside of moving the cylinder down is well uh, the longer duration in exhaust 
tends to hurt a little bit of the top end or the high RPM performance. Is it noticeable? Probably not because most of the ignitions on these things are rev limited so you're not going to really feel that. And moving the, uh, the transfers down creates another problem. When the piston goes down to bottom dead center, that uh, transfer is now interfered with that piston. That sharp edge creates a little bit of turbulence. So a lot of guys will actually raise the transfers to recover that and to mitigate the damage created by that sharp edge of the piston making turbulence. There was a company, Madsons, that used to just put a little ramp right there. So they'd cut this. Let's see if I got one of those pistons around. Man, if I do. Yeah, this piston right here. Check that out. So what this guy did here was they milled the cylinder, right? So they dropped it. But then in order to get the transfers right, they took a little bit off the top of the piston. So you don't have that sharp edge of the piston creating a turbulence when the piston's at bottom dead center. That right there would be at the floor of the transfers, right? I, I think that's a clever concept. And what you may see me do is do a derivative of this on one of the pop-ups. So not only do I get an increase in um, compression, but I also get my uh, transfer port opened all the way as well. Look closely. Look closely. And ask yourself, what's the difference between doing that and then having to go through all those gymnastics about raising the roof of the transfer port? Right? So, it's a little bit of a tangent, but uh, these are little tips. And I'll let the experts talk about how these things change the, um, the performance envelope of a saw. But like I said, compression and lowering the exhaust port usually helps a little bit on the bottom end. Raising the exhaust port usually helps a little bit on the top. I always I like to build saws that have more torque. You know, the ones that have a little more punch in the mid-range. Bottom end, not so much screamers. And so I'll do things like increase the compression and drop the cylinder to get that.